What's up beautiful people of YouTube, GRC here, and today I have a review of the Air 58 Ninja by Final Mouse. Now, since I had already done a review of the Ultralight Sunset, I sort of went back and forth on whether or not I should even bother doing a re-review of this mouse. Ultimately though, I felt my original video of the Sunset was lacking, so I decided to essentially treat the Air 58 as a new mouse. Plus, I didn't have the same scoring system in place when I did that video, so it'll be interesting to see how the Air 58 fares. Also, I've made some additional alterations to said scoring system. Now everything is given a score out of 10 points and then weighted accordingly. As always, timestamps for each section of the review are below. That way, if you want to skip ahead, you are free to do so. For ease and visibility, however, they have been moved to the comment section. Anyway, enough intro. Let's get into it. First up is Shape and Shell. And honestly, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, unless you were looking for an even lighter, Final Mouse Ultralight Pro, Sunset, or Phantom Edition, there's really not a whole lot to get excited about here. They keep that same shape and shell that you find on all the other previous iterations of the Final Mouse Ultralight. There's just a few key differences depending on which model you're comparing to the Air 58. To put it simply, the Air 58 is just a lighter Ultralight Phantom with a different coloring scheme. If it wasn't obvious, they're calling it the Air 58 because it weighs 58 grams and that's with no cable. On my scale, I had it coming in at 62 grams and that's with a bit of cable. So you're probably wondering, well, how'd they make it even lighter? And the answer? More holes. If you remember, on all the other iterations of the Final Mouse Ultralight, the sides were solid pieces of plastic. As you can see here on the Air 58, that's not the case. They've traded in those solid pieces of plastic for what looks like sort of a stretched honeycomb shell pattern. In terms of grip, this actually didn't bother me as much as I was expecting it to. I think it's sort of a trade-off though. A solid piece of plastic feels better in your hand, but the almost mesh-like sides of the Air 58 make it much more breathable, meaning sweat's less of a concern. Compared to other mice, the Air 58 is actually very similar to the Zowie FK1 and ZA11. All three mice measure about 128 millimeters in length. At their grip widths, the FK1 and ZA11 both measure just under 60 millimeters, and the Air 58 measures just over 61 millimeters. In terms of height, the Air 58 is in between the two. It's a little bit taller than the FK1 and a little bit shorter than the ZA11. Overall, it was a pretty good fit for my 20.5 by 10.5 centimeter hand. While a bit small to fully palm grip, I was able to use a hybrid of claw and palm that was quite comfortable. When you combine the Air 58's safe shape with its comparatively extremely low weight, you get a mouse that's very comfortable to use for extended periods of time. Personally, I actually found the Air 58 to be too light. It seems I play better with a mouse that's somewhere in the 80 to 90 gram mark. Now, I only used the mouse for about two or three weeks, so there's a good chance I just didn't give myself enough time to get used to it. Also keep in mind that how light or heavy you like your mouse is very subjective. I mean, just look at the popularity of the Logitech G502. That thing is a brick to me and I have no idea how people game with it. So while its low weight adds a lot comfort wise, I also feel it detracts from its accuracy. I had sufficient aim most of the time, but it wasn't anything particularly special. Ignoring the weight issue, I also just feel like there are shapes out there that I play better with, like the Razer Mamba or the Oris M3. To conclude, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Air 58's shape and shell, but if you know going in that you want a large mouse with the weight of a very small mouse, you won't be disappointed. Comfort earns a score of 9 out of 10, and accuracy gets an 8 out of 10. With their weighted values in total, shape and shell earns a score of 25.5 out of 30. Up next is buttons and scroll wheel, but before we get into them too much, here's a quick sound test so you can get a feel for them.
Final Mouse did a nice job with the buttons. Mouse 1 and 2 here are excellent. They're separate from the shell with sizable finger grooves. In terms of stiffness, I would say they lean towards the light side without straying too far from the middle. The side buttons, however, seem to be even lighter than Mouse 1 and 2. Overall, there's not much to complain about here. All the buttons have minimal pre and post travel, which is great to see and feel. The only change I would make is probably to increase the size of the side buttons. When gaming, I found myself having to move my thumb up more than I normally like just to reach them. But that's a pretty minor gripe and I can actually see them not wanting to change that because with larger side buttons there would be less space and freedom on where to place your thumb. The single DPI button is good and out of the way and unfortunately none of the buttons can be remapped because there is no officially supported Final Mouse software. I believe you can change the polling rate of the Air 58 with the DM1 Pro S's software. Its default setting is 500Hz, unfortunately testing that is a bit above the technical prowess of this channel. But I do want to add, I don't seem to play any better or worse whether the polling rate is at 500 or 1000Hz. The scroll wheel is decent, it has light tactility in its steps, the rubber coating isn't my favorite as it feels a bit slick, but it performed fine while gaming. Mouse button 3 feels the stiffest of all the buttons. I would like to see some more well-defined steps in the scroll wheel, but other than that there's not much to say. It's good, not great. Buttons earn a 9 out of 10 and scroll wheel earns an 8 out of 10. With their weighted values in total, buttons and scroll wheel get a 26 out of 30. Up next is sensor. The Air 58 is rocking the Pixart 3360. While gaming, tracking was flawless. If I made a bad play or didn't do well in a game of Overwatch, it was always my fault and nothing I could blame on the sensor. Therefore, it earns a perfect score, 10 out of 10. With its weighted value, that comes to a total of 20 out of 20. Up next is mouse feet, which are satisfactory, but with significant room for improvement. They're quiet on the slower side and I didn't have any major issues with them. You get four what I would call medium to small sized feet on the underside. A common minor issue that people have been experiencing is that one of the feet seems to drag or scrape across the mouse pad. This was actually present on my ultralight sunset. The issue does resolve itself with use, but it would be nice to see Final Mouse proactively trying to fix the issue. The problem seems to stem from the high number of sharp angles on the mouse feet. If we count acute angles, there are two on each in the front and one on each in the back, giving us a total of six. Comparing this to other mice, most either have four or less. My favorite stock mouse feet are actually found on most Zowie mice. As you can see, there are no sharp angles and everything is curved and smoothed out. Honestly, in my opinion, this should be standard across all gaming mice. But I digress. The mouse feet on the Air 58 earn a score of 7 out of 10. Up next is Cable, which is excellent but it's probably not as good as Final Mouse's marketing team might have you believe. No, it does not feel like a wireless mouse. However, when compared to other stock cables, it's one of the best. The cable is thick, braided, and malleable. As you can see, there's virtually zero pushback when trying to move the mouse. Cable earns a score of 9 out of 10. Lastly, we have value. The MSRP of $90 is pretty steep for what you're getting, no RGB, no software, and only four preset DPIs. Personally, I don't care too much about that stuff, so it doesn't bother me. And if you are looking for a large mouse with a very low weight, Final Mouse is the only player in town, at least for now. Thankfully, another company, Glorious PC Gaming Race, is coming out with a mouse they're calling the Model O or Odin, which should be released within the next month or two. If done properly, I could really see the Odin dethroning the ultralight, especially when you factor in price. The Odin starts at just $50, almost half of what the ultralight costs. Either way, I think some competition will be good for Final Mouse, and when I say Final Mouse, I mean us, the consumers. One thing I really do have to commend them for is their marketing. While I think they went a bit far hyping up this product, they seemingly managed to get everyone talking about it. It was almost like they took a page out of Donald Trump's playbook, say outlandish things and gain attention. And so far, it has worked to great effect. I mean, the Air 58 and all the other previous iterations of the Ultralight are basically just Scream 1 clones with holes in their shell and an upgraded cable. 
So Final Mouse has been able to get away with charging the premium that they do because, to my knowledge, they've been the first and only ones to use this honeycomb shell pattern with weight reduction in mind. But, like I said, I think that's about to change. As I touched on before, the Air 58's buttons, sensor, and cable are all top notch. Unfortunately, it just seems like you're paying extra for them. Value earns a score of 7 out of 10. Before I wrap things up, I did want to talk a bit more about Final Mouse's marketing team. Obviously, it's their job to hype up a product and get people excited about it. However, that should never be taken so far as to just straight up lie, which is what Final Mouse did on more than one occasion. The biggest being them saying that the mouse was not branded. And it's a shame because it makes customers, and me personally, put less stock in things they'll say in the future. So be advised, take Final Mouse's word with a grain of salt. From a business person's perspective, I actually have to praise Final Mouse's product releases. They produce quote unquote limited editions and incremental upgrades for each run of a mouse they do. They just tweak the color, cable, and in this case, shell. This allows them to keep selling their product at the original MSRP of $90. Sure, you could argue that Razer and Logitech do the same thing every time they update one of their recurring mouse shapes. The difference here is that six months after the latest Razer Death Adder or Logitech G502 is released, you see price reductions. And since Final Mouse's inventory is almost always out of stock, they don't have to deal with price drops. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time talking about Final Mouse as a company. There are whole other videos out there dedicated to just that, but it's not always easy to separate a company from their product. To wrap things up, the Air 58 is a solid offering from Final Mouse. While I personally don't care too much for it, if you want a large mouse weighing under 70 grams, it gets my recommendation. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Peace.